morning friends and fellow traders this is Doug Campbell with Rightway Options and this is the morning market prep video for December 22nd 2021 so my goodness yesterday we had quite the reversal triggered a short squeeze in the market and improved some of the technicals of the index charts but still leaves some significant questions behind yet to be answered. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in? Let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. I do truly appreciate it. Um, I want to make a quick reminder that tomorrow I will be gone um, for holiday plans. So Thursday and Friday, um, right way options will be closed. That means there will not be a video on Thursday. If you um, are planning on being here, just be very, very careful. There will be some market moving events that we'll talk about um, in just a little bit but you'll want to plan carefully because volume could drop off really fast after those market moving reports occur. So let's take a look at today's chart, see if we can gain some information about how we might want to approach the day. If we take a look at the diamonds here, um, as you can see, we've got, well, some, some improvement. Obviously this is a pretty nice reversal to the upside, but what we probably should be paying attention to is the fact that we still have this substantial resistance above. Now, pre-market, you can see in that pink candle right there, they are trying to push this up in the pre-market on the diamonds, but there remains significant um, risk in that resistance to the upside. And also keep in mind, as we push on through, we have additional levels of price resistance above that we'll still need to breach as we go through um, the day or the rest of the week. So you'll want to keep that closely in mind Whoops, um, as we approach those levels. It could be an interesting um, day. Now, if we were to happen to reverse back down, let's look right down into here. If we can hold that candle's low of yesterday, we've got a little tiny bit of price support right through that area. It is actually just a little bit lower where we contact a more significant level of price report. Unfortunately, that would be a very, very painful pullback. And if we were to reverse and slip into that gap, oh my goodness, that would really raise um, everyone's eyebrows. So watch carefully here. Now we also have to continue to remember, depending on how you draw this downtrend line, whether it be here or whether you try to incorporate um, that reversal right there, we still have that downtrend here in the chart to be dealing with. And if you look at this pattern, this is a pattern we like to call the bearish M pattern. There's that lower high and possible lower low so not exactly that warm and fuzzy pattern that we'd like to see in the market but it is nice to see that improvement now keep in mind that yesterday in that big surge back to the upside we still didn't quite make it through that 50-day moving average and this morning that still remains resistance as we're trying to push through or follow through with yesterday's big candle. So we can't rule out that possibility that we pop here in the morning and then react negatively to that 50-day um, moving average in the Dow. Now let's take a look at the SPY. Now SPY had the improvement in its technicals by actually getting back above that 50-day moving average. So we sliced right back up through there. Unfortunately, we have a pretty big question yet to answer. How will we deal with the, this price resistance right here in the chart? And you can see in the pre-market, we're trying to pump up to that. And as we push through, if we can push through, remember, we have this level of price resistance in the chart and then the the very significant topping price resistance here in the chart that we're going to have to get through if we were to slip if we were to fail on these news reports or things coming up well just keep in mind there's not a whole lot of price support underneath that big move of yesterday here in the 
in this chart. There is a little bit of price congestion right in here that could provide a little bit of support. But if we were to pull back, um, that could be a problem. Now also keep in mind that 50 day moving average will act as a little bit of price support if we can hold, but if we get that big nasty reversal here today, then um, that could push us right back down below that 50 pretty quickly. And that would, that would constitute a potential blue ice failure pattern in um, the SPY. If we take a look at the queues, very much the same here. QQQ saw that slight technical improvement on the day crossing back above its 50. But remember, if we were to fail here at that 50, that creates that uh, blue ice failure pattern in the chart. And we have to keep a pretty close eye on all of this price resistance that we see in this chart as we move back up, whether or not we can actually recover all that. That's going to be the big question. And unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of price support um, after that big move yesterday, except that 50 day. And if we were to find reason for those bears to, to re-engage, um, a pullback into here certainly would be possible before we garner any major support in the chart. And we still, still have this problem right here that we're going to have to deal with as we move back up as well. So these resistance levels in the chart will also be challenged by that little downtrend that we show in the NASDAQ. Let's take a look at the Russell. Now our Russell had a nice improvement yesterday and it stayed bullish all day long yesterday, but I don't think anybody can look at this chart and say that's resolved a whole lot of the technical problems here in the Russell. Notice we have significant price congestion and resistance um, in this area and that just continues um, if we can breach back higher. So a lot of potential upside resistance here in the Russell, uh, potentially blocking that path. Not to exclude this very sharp downtrend that we are also in. So as we approach this level right in here, we've kind of got that little double whammy of price resistance here to watch for in the Russell. Now, if the Russell were to reverse, I want you to note that there really isn't any support under that big candle of yesterday until we push all the way and maybe even give up that entire move. So if those bears were to re-engage, that could be a rather painful pullback um, in the market if that were to occur. And unfortunately, when we have a market that th that is this emotional with these huge swings, there's risk, dramatic risk on both sides, unless you're just a quick intraday trader and intraday traders, this is a field day for them. They're loving these, this kind of wild volatility because there's a lot of quick in and out trades. But for the swing position trader, for the majority of folks out there that trade the market, this is not a comfortable situation to be in and adds significant risk to your trading. So let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX, whoops. Um, Interestingly enough, pulled back yesterday, but after such a huge move up, you would you would honestly expected to had a bigger reaction in that VIX. It didn't occur. And as a matter of fact, we continue to hold on to this upside trend here in the chart. Now that of course could change today if we react positively to the economic data coming our way. But this also flags that little bit of warning that there's still concern out here in the market and the vol with volatility being so high with these big uh, point whips. Well, we have to keep in, uh, you know, in perspective that the possibility that we whip the opposite direction again today is certainly a possibility. So keep a close eye on that. Now we have some support in this chart. And if we were to hold this area, if those bears were to re-engage, popping us back up, then we've created some price resistance right here on yesterday's candle. Um, but let's watch that closely. It all depends on how we react to this data today. And then let's take a look at our T2122. Now our T2122, and this is something I hate seeing in the market. And that is these big emotional swings, because all this did was add 
huge risk to those folks who jumped long, the buy the dip buyers um, run that scary potential of being punished again um, by rushing um, into the market in that big swing that occurred here in the charts. So keep that in mind. Um, and, and remember, this is all COVID related. And we still don't know anything when it comes to this new Omicron variant, how it's actually going to um, impact um, the ec economy. So it's we're only one news report away from either a dramatic improvement or a major failure in the market as that emotion continues to swing back and forth here. Now, if you keep a close eye on this, we pushed up off of this bearish reversal zone and we talked about that's where we were and that possibility of a bounce came in. And I was looking for some nice bull put credit spreads yesterday, but even the market makers are very uncertain about this. So they're keeping bid ask spreads wide. They're making um, trades very, very high risk for an option trader. Um, and so intraday trading is kind of um, kind of king right now at trading that high volatility where swing and position trading is pretty high risk. Now take a look um, if we can continue to move up today, if we can find that inspiration to move on up, we certainly have room to the upside before we hit that bearish reversal zone. But it wouldn't take all that big a push. Um, to put us up into that region. Now, if those bears were to re-engage, what we have done is we've created that risk, that big downside potential risk, if those bears were to find reason to re-engage um, at these resistance levels. So um, just kind of keep that, uh, you know, in the back of your mind as you're planning trades and heading into this long weekend, the risk of that that an uncertainty of the shutdown can create lots of whips in the market. And then let's take a look at our uh, T2108. Now T2108 did improve yesterday, but I got to tell you by the close of the day just really didn't give me that huge warm and fuzzy that I'd like to see here in the market. Keep in mind these are the number of stocks that are holding above their 40-day average, okay? In that 40-day average you can see only about 25% of the stocks doing that which puts us in a situation that 75% of our stocks are failing below or still below that 40-day moving average. Now once again I, I know no one pays attention to the 40-day moving average but um, that's how this indicator is calculated. So obviously that is not a bullish sign and consider where we are in this market, how close we are to market tops in this market and we only have this many stocks holding above their 40 day. That's a problem and we're continuing to see very few stocks being able to manipulate those indexes higher while the rest of the market is not being healthy. T2120 Oops, T2107, there we go. T2107 also showed that nice little improvement yesterday, a little W type bottom may be forming here, but let's keep in mind that didn't really fix a whole lot. We still have massive downtrends, tremendous resistance above um, in that chart, but an improvement, 36% of our stocks above our 200 day moving average. So that is nice. We're gonna definitely need those stocks coming up out of that bottom to break those downtrends. However, if we're gonna see any sustainable improvement in the market because the weight of this is substantial. Let's take a look. T2101, as expected yesterday, on a big move to the upside, that market breadth actually pulled back as you would normally see. And as you can see right through here, we've got this price support in the chart and we still have that potential here if those bears were to re-engage to utilize this price support of the downtrend and um, right through this area as a place to bounce off of. And that would be that place where those bears could re-engage. So watch that closely. Um, now let's take a look at our um, economic calendar for today and we'll take a look at not only today but tomorrow since I will be gone. Um, if you take a look today we have some weighty um, in uh, reports coming out this morning before the bell here we're going to hear from the GDP. Um, right now um, the consensus in the Econo Day is that it stays flat where it was last month 
but we saw some of those numbers declining uh, last week and inflation rising. That could certainly hurt that GDP, so we'll want to watch that. If it comes in as expected or somewhere better than expected, we could see the market catch that as a bullish sign. But if it were to miss, um, just remember how much risk there is in this big whip that we move to the upside if we find reason for bearishness. And then we're going to follow that through with consumer confidence and they are expecting, and kind of surprisingly on my part, they're expecting consumer confidence to increase. I personally don't see that with inflation this high, but that may be the case, so watch that carefully. If that were to miss, that could also bring out those bears. And um, we'll want to pay attention to existing home sales, that they're looking at those existing home sales of increasing here this morning. So they're all they're pumping these as, as positive numbers this morning. Let's hope they, they do that, because if they miss or they disappoint, um, we've created an awful lot of downside risk if they were to disappoint and then we've got that oil status number and that'll be important today oil has been suffering here just recently um, obviously the new variant um, creating impacts or possible impacts to the market that could uh, diminish that demand so we'll want to watch carefully there and then keep in mind uh, for those uh, that are going to be around on Thursday we have several big reports here um, look for these reports here in the morning those are market moving reports uh, durable goods probably one of the bigger of the day that could really make things move around a little bit then we've got claims uh, personal incomes and outlays uh, new home sales and one of my favorites here is how are the how are the consumers feeling what's that sentiment out there for um uh, those consumers. Now remember tomorrow after we, um, and, and really today after we get through these data points, good chance volumes really quickly decline. If you took a look yesterday, um, even with the big rally in the Dow, by and large we spent more time just chopping sideways because um, just all the uncertainty heading into the holiday weekend. And um, there's a good chance that as we get through these data points today and tomorrow, volume will just die on the vine and we'll enter into real choppy conditions so um pretty normal in holiday trading so just keep that in mind remember we're closed on friday and i will be gone both thursday and friday there'll be no morning market prep video uh, tomorrow morning. Let's take a quick look at um, our economic calendar, or excuse me, our earnings calendar. Our earnings calendar is a little bit light today with um, 12 companies listed, but there's not that many companies that are even verified on that list. I went through and pulled out some notables. Um, KMX will want to pay attention to that this morning. It looks like KMX has already reported pushing through to the upside here this morning. Um, keep in mind we are still moving in this downtrend and we have significant price re um, resistance levels above to be paying attention to as it tries to rally back up. Uh, we're going to hear from Cintas um, this morning, so keep a close eye on that. Cintas could be an interesting report today. And then PAYX will also be reporting. It looks like they're gapping through their resistance level here in the chart looking for some higher print. So PAYX must have done a pretty good job on their early morning earnings. So watch that close. Um, it um, let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today. But before we do that, guys, if you could do me that quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube. Also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And also, if you find these videos to be useful and helpful to planning your day, if you could please click that thumbs up button and leave a bit brief comment. I truly, truly appreciate it. And I want everyone to know that this is the kind of work I have done for years and years and years. It, it, it's a little bit, um, I, I'm going to do this anyway because this helps me prepare for my day, helps me focus in on what I should be doing today, where the risks lie. And um, so I just happened to start sharing um, that information here on YouTube. And I just want to say thanks to everyone who supports this effort. Um, I truly appreciate it. It means the world to me. Thank you so much and thank you for all of those kind words and comments and thank you to everyone who continues to support the channel 
um, through the buy me a coffee link I really really appreciate that let's take a look um, at the stock setting up and please keep in mind guys these are not recommendations to buy or sell any security you have to be very very careful and cautious um, on these trains be because there is significant risk in the whip um, of, of this market so watch carefully now let's take a look at some of those places where we could be seeing a little bit of trouble take a look at um, the financials now financials had a good strong rally back yesterday but I want you to take note we're still well below price resistance levels here in the chart significant price resistance levels and that 50-day moving average I want you to take note that that 50-day moving average is starting to flatten and even turn so even as we rally up here in the market there is significant risk in these resistance areas so watch that carefully if the financials falter here unable to get back above that 50 that could be a problem for the market I'm also going to say that on the energy side of things when you take a look at energy we certainly took, had a nice bounce off that 200 day but take a look at all the price resistance up here and that energy sector we're seeing that 50-day moving average starting to roll and turn to the downside so watch that carefully anything in that financial if you look at like BAC BAC could easily set up as a short uh, JP Morgan could easily set itself up as a short underneath the 200 day moving average not a good sign for the market and if we take a look at Goldman Goldman showing us that same kind of ugliness here um, with a 50 day moving average that is flattened and now starting to decline not a good look here for the market with so much resistance above if we take a look at some of those energy sector stocks take a look at Exxon Mobil these are setting up as potential shorts there's that failure at the 50 day and we continue in this downtrend and as we rally back in here we want to be watchful for that potential that some of these energy stocks could roll back over to the downside and that makes it very very difficult for the market if financials and energies are showing bearishness it makes it very very difficult for the market to rally the other thing that I think is really important that everyone be paying attention to if you take a look at the consumer staples um, the only way we can move these old boring stocks in consumer staples this much is there has to be a rotation from the institution institutions institutions are are slowly rotating out of those um, high flying stocks and the high risk stocks and they're moving into some safety and it's clearly seen here in the XLP chart with this big strong move last couple of days we've had a nice little pullback now that sets up opportunity if we can continue to hold above these upper levels hold those support levels then we could see some upside uh, moves in those charts and you know these are all the charts that we've been talking about over and over here recently take a look like LW breaking through its 50 day nice little push up here any rest or pullback sets up an opportunity we've got constellation brands very very strong trying to pop through resistance here in the chart that's looking quite bullish Hershey um, an old boring stock breaking out new record highs here in Hershey and that opportunity that we could hold a higher low in here and just note that these are dividend payers that are perking up and looking really good keep an eye on stocks like GIS now GIS just reported its earnings trying to move back up here that was a big strong move these are boring boring companies showing um, some bullishness now there are those in here like Kellogg's not so good but when you continue to look um, there's lots of these old boring stocks pushing up holding support levels um, coca-cola monster beverages pepsico we're seeing um, clorox we're seeing colgate palmolive we're seeing mondelez 
um, a lot of these stocks looking quite st strong. So keep a close eye on those for potential long trades um, with those institutions kind of rotating into those areas. A couple others that I wanted to mention this morning, take a look at AT&T. AT&T has been beaten down and beaten down and beaten down. This isn't ready for prime time yet. This is just that surge back to the upside and we need to see proof now that we've broken through that 50 and broken some um, resistance levels in the chart. We need to prove that we can hold. And then I would look for some opportunity here. This is a big divvy payer. And again, it's that safety play that could be coming around. This still has to deal with that downtrend in the chart. But take a look at Verizon. Verizon is another one breaking that 50, breaking the downtrend, really strong surge to the upside. Again, seeking a little bit of safety and dividends in that push up. If this rests and consolidates, look for that opportunity for that to move on higher. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a fantastic day. And more importantly, guys, I want to wish you an awesome, awesome long holiday weekend. Everyone stay safe. Be careful in your travels. And I want to wish you all of the best for you and your family. A very Merry Christmas. And if you're not coming back until after the new year, a Happy New Year as well. Be safe, everyone. Take care. Enjoy your family. Remember, the market comes and goes every day. But that family is something that um, is not going to be around forever. So make sure to uh, take the time to step away. It's one of the great things about being a trader is that flexibility to do something else when the market is acting like this. So be safe and we'll see you right back here bright and early Monday morning. I wish you all the best.